Ooh. This doohickey, uh, this is a drill. Nothing special here, unless you're Amish. And this is what happens when a drill hooks up with a pistol. It does something a hell of a lot more explosive than drilling holes. Yeah, baby. You're looking at a prototype electric revolver. The first of its kind, it employs an acrylic six-shot cylinder with transparent walls, and it's driven by, you guessed it, capacitors. If you know about electrolytic capacitors, then surely you know about their reputation. I mean, they're infamous for blowing up. Wire them backwards, maybe give them just a little bit too much voltage, or hell, even insulting them is enough to make them go nuclear. Usually a bad thing. Unless you use that explosive tendency for something useful. Personally, I found that this flaw, so to speak, is actually a massive strength that opens up a whole new world. This video is sponsored by Mel Science. So an idea popped into my head when I was filming my last video about slow motion plasma. I had a phantom camera at my disposal and I filmed a few capacitors exploding. You see, wire them up correctly and nothing happens. But push them beyond their limits. And the fact that they self-destruct so readily, it got me thinking about practical uses. Channeling my spirit animal, Matt from Demolition Ranch, the first thing I thought about was putting a capacitor in a barrel and using it to push out a projectile. In the name of science. So purely in the spirit of innovation, that's exactly what I set out to do. But first I had a couple of variables I needed to sort out. For starters, do electrolytic caps universally explode? Or do some just sizzle? And how does the applied voltage affect the velocity of the explosion? Is there even a correlation? Hard to tell because data sheets don't exactly list an explosion velocity rating. Yo other Jay, you see any ratings for velocity? Uh -uh. With all the work I had ahead of me, realistically the first place to start was to determine if these even pack enough of a punch to push something out of a barrel in the first place. Considering the entire prototype depended on it, I was hoping these little caps delivered. So what I'm thinking is this, I have a bunch of half inch acrylic pipe just sitting around from past projects and I do have a random electrolytic capacitor. Um, I'm going to put it in the back, tape it up so that it's airtight and then make sure the electrodes are sticking out the back and then give it way too much voltage. See what happens, maybe put something in the barrel to become a projectile. Here's the sketchy setup. Capacitors primed in the back and I'm going to have it actually shoot out another capacitor as the projectile. It's the only thing I could find right now. I wrapped it in tape to give it a more snug fit in the barrel because it is too small for the barrel. Let's do it. I hooked it up to power and proceeded to do the very first test to see what kind of potential this idea would carry. Results were disappointing. What I need is a capacitor that fits the tube a lot more tightly. And I think I found it. Such a great fit that it kind of acts like a hydraulic piston if you put one on the other end. That's kind of cool. Another capacitor to shoot. This could go south. Safety glasses, because I don't want to lose my eyes. Here we go. Ah, don't blow up on me. Don't blow up on me. Ah. Oh. <sighs> Woo. To test if that result was repeatable, I loaded a second cap and used the same crappy projectile. It's important to see if it consistently goes off, so let's give it a try. <laughs> that setup was comically inefficient, and despite that, I was still able to get the caps to fire off kind of reliably and get some kind of velocity out of the barrel. Imagine when I optimized the setup. So lesson learned, caps do make a good propellant. With this news, I set out to determine the relationship between voltage applied and muzzle velocity. I expected a positive correlation. With a fixed half inch barrel, this limited the physical size of the capacitors I could use, which actually kind of simplified things. So I went to my local armory to find the right caliber of ammunition. Ultimately, I lined up 12 rounds of 10 volt, 1800 microfarad caps. These were split into three test triplicates of 30 volts, which was three times the capacitor's rating, 60 volts, which was six times, and 90 volts, which was nine times their voltage rating. I then built a more stable test rig, which kind of looked like a cannon, and muzzle-loaded the official ammunition. 
Initial test at 20 volts. Oh boy, I had a lot of work to do. Oh. This provided great data. So at 30 volts, the speed averaged a pretty miserable 33 feet per second. At 60 volts, we saw an improvement to about 73 feet per second, and 90 volts ultimately provided triple digits at 104 feet per second. This is a positive correlation. Okay, the proof of concept works. I know the relationship between voltage and velocity, which is a positive correlation, and the capacitors reliably fire. So that's all the information I need to know to build this capacitor revolver. These electrolytic caps have two electrodes sticking out of the back, which need to be physically connected to the power source before every shot. And after each shot, the leads need to be disconnected and a new cap put in their place. So what follows is merely a summary of my engineering journey to make that happen. I've intentionally left out a ton of build detail just so that this video does not fall into the category of how to build a weapon. Delete. Don't try building one yourself, just enjoy the video. Finally, the rounds consist of an aluminum projectile glued to the front of a fresh capacitor. It looks really sleek, but let's rewind a second and talk about that drill battery. This was the hardest part of my design and literally racked my brain for a solid week. Here's why. 90 volts provided the best results, but guess what? Finding a handheld 90 volt DC power supply that can pump out close to 10 amps when I need it? Nearly impossible. That's called a pipe dream. Luckily, my Patreons pointed me in a good direction, and I found a flexible 20 to 60 volt battery designed for drills, and I hacked it open at 60 volts to do my evil bidding. Closer to actually about 62 volts, which would be good enough for the first version of this prototype. The completed revolver really looked the part, so I scheduled field tests for the next day. In the meantime, Mel Science sent me a couple of science kits to share with my nephew, and they were a total win. You see, all the way from the small tabletop to the grand scale of space, science is fundamentally about learning and exploration, which Mel Science has fully taken to heart. They're a fun subscription service that offers a huge variety of monthly science boxes geared towards STEM, which combine hands-on experiments with VR and AR tech in order to inspire learning. They sent my nephew two amazing DIY kits. The first was a hydraulic lift, and the second was a carbon zinc battery which powered this mechanical clock. Each kit came included with all the materials needed and the instructions, they were brilliantly clear and even included stories to help engage them further. We had a blast putting it together and it only took about 15 minutes. In the end, he learned about strength advantage using hydraulics, built a working hydraulic lift, and well, this speaks for itself. The second kit was equally as fun. It was from Mel's chemistry subscription where he learned to safely mix chemicals in order to build a zinc carbon battery from scratch. We used it to power a clock and even light up some LEDs. You can check them out at melscience.com where you can use the code PLASMA50 and you'll receive a 50% discount for the first month of any subscription. The code will be active for one month after the video goes live and I'll leave a link down below. And speaking of live, firing range.
So deep in the Cascades, a buddy of mine owns a shooting range, and it was the perfect place for a test because it was isolated, under construction, and totally private. Even though this revolver was not built as a weapon, it did look like one, so I didn't want to be around people. Okay, so I've got a can set up in the background and I've uh, added some spray lubricant to the barrel just to hopefully make it go a little bit faster. So here goes nothing. At this point I thought, Jay, you better hit this or no one's subscribing. Oh. Yeah, baby. Woo! Woo! <laughs> yeah! It's about time that Magic White Smoke did something useful. Oh, wait, I see something. Yep, that's a thumbnail. It works! <laughs> it works! At least for 12 shots, until the plastic gets obliterated and brittle and starts to crack all over. Oh look, a tough guy. I could easily rebuild this out of more acrylic, but it would only meet the same fate. Or I could build version 2 out of metal, and if you're subscribed, you'll be notified when I do. Look, as a prototype, I'm super thrilled about how this turned out, and I'm really excited for the possibilities going forward. Really glad you're here for the journey, and if you have any thoughts or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And check out the merch line if you like to rep Plasma, and head on over to my Patreon page to see the perks you'll get for being a Patreon. You stay classy!